Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir. And it's a pleasure being here again and uh, very enriching uh, panel discussions, a lot of learning for me personally when we talked about accreditation. And Amy, good to see you again. Um, so, Gantha, thanks so much. I learned a lot about uh, robots and AI, though I do understand how it works, but the small little nitty gritties was something that was very interesting. So, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, in the interest of time, um, and I know everybody would be tired, I'm just going to try and take a wrap at the earliest. Uh, but my key takeaway as a person who's been in the education line and now in the corporate has been two folds. Uh, so first part, I'm going to focus on uh, the education bit where I see that there has been a lapse and where we as uh, educationists from the higher institutions, especially from the management perspective, can make a change. So I did like a couple of points that the panelists spoke. One is the fact that we haven't evolved in terms of the kind of syllabus that we are teaching. And secondly, uh, we have still not incorporated to a great extent experiential learning. So today as millennials, uh, one thing that we need to understand is the concentration span of the millennials is not more than 30 seconds. So if you're going to kind of enhance or stress upon content information to them, I don't think that really works. I think they need to kind of experiment, they need to kind of explore, and they need to kind of engage. So these are the three E's that I constantly talk about when I engage with the millennials, because they want to kind of self-learn, they want to explore, and then based on their understanding, they're exploring, experimenting, going back and forth, they want to engage. So I think the B schools or the management schools have to give them that opportunity. And if you're not going to give them that opportunity, the learning is not going to happen. So one of the areas that uh, Gunther focused on was skills. And that's very, very close to all big giants, including my organization. And the reason is that while business schools all focus on functional skills because they give an opportunity to students to specialize in a certain area, they, I think, somewhere or the other, overlook the behavioral skills, which is the soft skills like communication, and a lot of other things in terms of how you are supposed to engage, engage, how you're supposed to collaborate. All these areas, I think many of the B schools do not focus on. So today, functional and behavioral skills are very, very important. And that's one area that all the schools need to focus. The third thing, today is not a generation where we say that a teacher is the supreme power in an educational institution. I think the first and foremost thing is we need to let go of that kind of egocentrism that most of the educationists have, that I'm the supreme power in an educational institution. I think for the longest time I had that issue and I'm being very honest and blatant that the first two years I always felt that I am in control, I am in charge, the students jolly will listen to me, but it didn't work. I think one thing that I learned is how to be adaptable, how to be flexible, and everybody has been talking about an agile environment. So I think reverse mentoring is very, very important. So while we teach the students, I think there's always an opportunity for us to learn from the, the students because they are going to be the ones who are tech savvy. They are the ones who are going to actually teach us shortcuts on how to save time, which I actually have learned from them. So I had this concept of doing things in a very long way, going the tedious way. But people at Cognizant, the millennials, actually taught me, Sandhya, learn it in three steps. You can just do it in three clicks rather than trying to do it in seven clicks. So it has actually not only helped me to save time, but it has also helped me to understand the power of technology as to how well I can use technology today, the digital transformation that we talk about really in the best to my strengths and to the best of the way I can make a more conducive environment for learning. The third thing that we talked about is we are not allowing students to have integrated perspective. And I'm going to completely agree on that. When I, I deal with students who are coming from the B schools, uh, the biggest challenge with many of the organizations, sadly in India, is that we actually, even in our job descriptions, give that we want people from premier institutions, tier one institutions, and things like that. 
And I think that is something that we need to remove. And how we can remove is we should encourage teachers or professors of business schools to have certain kind of certifications. So I know for the fact that in countries like Singapore, Australia, especially for a language, you need a certain kind of certification. So if you're going to have the same concept actually coming in into any of the B schools, then I don't think there's going to be any kind of difference whether you're from IM or anything, because if you're going to standardize the quality of teachers, I think the institutions are not going to matter. Finally, it's the quality and what you are giving to the students is what is making one institution different from the other. Now, coming to the other aspect, so this was what I felt as far as the B schools need to do. Now, coming to the point of what we need, what we require as an organization is the fact that we basically want students not coming in with 100% knowledge. It's a very clear thing that we don't want them 100% knowledge. We want at least for them to have 40% knowledge because if you're going to come with 100% knowledge, they were going to feel very stagnated with their jobs. The 60% is what we need to teach them. And today, we expect that when a student comes in from a B school, while they are specializing in one domain, they also have cross-domain or cross-functional expertise. And that is why today, uh, I think Udemy and all these courses that are there, you can do so many of these skill-ups for yourself. So while you can focus on finance, you can also have the ability to understand how HR functions. The reason being that HR is one of the big corporate functions of any organization. And while we are dependent on finance, finance is also dependent on us because of the strategic planning, because of the way we have to plan our workforce, we have to plan the successions and so on and so forth. Secondly, for an organization that are at a global level, I think it's very important. The mode of delivery for business schools have to be standardized. Now, while in India, we have a different way of learning, I think abroad, there's a very different way of learning. They are more into practical learning. And that's where the difference happens. So while in India, we are used to doing things faster because we have been taught that way, whereas in the other side, they do it, they think through it, and they are able to kind of present a larger picture in a much better way. So I think for organizations which are at a global level, we expect that there is a standard methodology of teaching or a standard way that we can build in to teach students across the globe so that they are in a position to take global growth, especially because today everything is remote, everything is work from home. So while you might be kind of be in India, you can work in Germany, you can work in Australia, you can work anywhere. And that's that's the kind of flexibility that we're talking about. Thirdly, when we are talking about students getting involved in accreditation, I think that's that's really fantastic because they also kind of give a reality check to understand what is the huge gap between industry and academia and how we can actually bridge that gaps. So while there's a lot to do, uh, from the organizations, but there's also a lot to do from the business school's perspective. So my take would be that develop the skills of the students to be prepared for new roles that are actually emerging. So there are a lot of new roles that are emerging because of the changing environment, because of the fact that we are uh, influenced by virtual world now because of the pandemic. And I love what uh, uh, Professor Bala said, that it, we are living in a very uncertain future. And the only thing we are going to be sure of is the digital transformation, the technological support that we require, and the aggressiveness of the usage of technology. So if today organizations as well as B-schools understand this, I think they are going to standardize a lot of things for students, for teachers, and the different stakeholders to bridge the gap between industry and academia. And I would also request that while we are talking about certifications, we are talking about accreditations, we're talking about a whole lot of things. I think it's very important to see the relevance and importance of not only to the B schools, but how is it kind of convert into a positive job prospects for the student 
who is actually going to be looking at employment in any of the big schools or big organizations. So while there's a lot to kind of cover up, but I just want to sum it up uh, saying that we are always endeavoring to bridge the gap between industry and academia. We are always trying to look at what is the kind of skills that can be strengthened once uh, a student comes into the organization. But my only key advice to all B-School professors, teachers is please encourage cross-domain skills and cross-functional skills. Do not encourage students to just focus on one area because that's not something that we are looking at. We are looking at people having multiple skills. So I will close here and thank uh, Professor Raman as uh, somebody said that you might not be a real professor, but the knowledge that you have in this domain is absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you, Smita Ma'am. Thank you everyone for this opportunity. And it was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Uh... Professor Sandhya, it is, uh, it's an amazing kind of, you're a professor first and then probably you are coming to the corporate next. It's a brilliant address. You understand the sensitivities involved in business school arena. And whatever you said is absolutely right. People with 100% knowledge is not going to get anything from a business school. 60%, yes, that's what you said. I, I really appreciate that. But the, the thing is, you touched upon something really fabulous. I'm sorry, you are, what is this? I, I forgot to say one thing that I think the B-School should also encourage ideation and innovation because right. that's thing which is very, very important to the millennials. So I, I try to keep looking at new words. So I combine millennial and Gen Z as millen Z now. And, you know, we have global meetings where we have to keep saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So other version that I've created is make it short and say good May, which is morning, afternoon, evening. So these are mm -hmm. some of the things that I keep innovating for myself to deal with people globally. So that's one thing that I wanted to kind of add on. Yeah, the student, um, uh, this thing, we have a student competition, a yes, competition. And there's some, one of the students from uh, Mongolia, if I'm not mistaken, I had used this word called physical and digital, physical digital, you know, something like that. So uh, it's basically the idea that you are talking about and what Gunther talked about. And also, I think the previously the panel talked about all of all of you are talking about is this. You can't just say that it's a digital world. So you've got to have uh, you know a strategy for the digital world. But definitely, there is a huge amount of learning in a physical sense of the term. You can't just simply say that, OK, digital, uh, you know, artificial intelligence will be there, robotics will take over and so on. It's not going to happen that way. You are involved very much. That's the reason why I keep on emphasizing that, yes, human beings are involved, very much involved. In fact, Elon Musk says something very, very interesting. He says, please regulate. I really like the way he said it. He said, regulate this artificial intelligence mental learning because if you don't do it, human beings will regret forever. So this is something that I think is an emphasis that one should really remember in this whole thing. So thank you very much, uh, Sandhya. This is a fabulous uh, session. And thank you for uh, launching this particular service that we are, we are, we are going to uh, have. And we will also have a channel, and the channel will be able to take over there. Thank you so much. <laughs>